And I get nervous thinking, what you gonna do? She grabbed you by the arm, I'm thinking, I'm through. Then you look back at me and suddenly I'm helpless. Oh, look at those eyes, oh. Who here has had to go to court before? Raise your hand if you had to go to court before. Okay, so does this look familiar to anyone? It's a judge court. It's a judge court. So who sits up here? The judge. The judge, okay. And who sits right here? The witness. The witness. What does the witness do? It tells anything that they saw what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah, that they saw what happened or what happened to them, huh? We encounter children who have experienced various types of trauma from witnessing a homicide, witnessing domestic violence, directly experiencing sexual abuse or physical abuse. Just think how threatening the courtroom scene is for an adult. Then you take a child, you put a child in that same position, and we now, as prosecutors in public, I guess, expect a child to perform and take the stand and articulate bad things that were done to that child or bad things that child saw. And this uh, system, the CAC work and their workers, just do such a good job at easing that tension for that child. When the children and the parents or caregivers walk through the door, there is a transition process because now they're dealing with, okay, I have to address what actually happened. You know, it's like a surreal moment for them. There's a moment that the child may come out and just, you know, cry just because they've kind of brought that trauma that actually occurred in full view. There are a number of different types of trauma. It could be a trauma from a loss of a loved one. It could be a trauma from being witness to something that was traumatic like a shooting or um, just an, ac an accident. It could be anything like that. And so uh, the CAC provides a great opportunity for these young people to have an outlet. We recognize that trauma happens not only in the mind, but it happens in the body. So we offer yoga, or Tai Chi, or Qigong, meditation, and guided imagery. The, the people think that the easy way to, do, to deal with that is forget it. Just close your eyes, don't do any, anything. But that stays with you, and later it comes. So the way that here they help us is we talk, we bring it up, and uh, the way that they, you know, with the people that have knowledge and experience, uh, they help us uh, how to survive. We think of our work as not only helping children at this really critical time in their life when they are, their brains are developing and we're trying to help them have a, a good start, we're also keeping the end game in mind, which is we're helping all of society in that we're hoping to reduce social problems that we know are going to happen if trauma is not addressed appropriately. The primary connection we have with the Children's Advocacy Centers is in the realm of forensic interviews. So we are so grateful for this resource. It's, it's a critical resource to our state agency. Um, it allows children to be interviewed one time, um, which, which minimizes their, um, their trauma. In law enforcement, we used to have to bring our children, our victims, into an interrogation room, essentially, because there was no kid-friendly or even home-style friendly environment. But here at the CAC, the interviewer is in a completely separate room with the victim, asking all the questions, making them feel comfortable, and giving them opportunity to talk about what happened to them. And they have a viewing room where law enforcement or other detectives or whoever needs to be in the room to view the interview for their investigation. And then if we need to ask additional questions, the, the forensic interviewer in the other room checks in with us periodically and says, is there anything else you need us to cover? And so essentially we're all working together to get the whole story about, you know, what happened. I'm Madison Henderson, I'm 16, I go to Baton Rouge High, and um, I was sexually abused by my stepfather when I was 12. You, you think to yourself, especially when it happens to you, your first thought is, how did this happen to me? How did, you know, what is this? one in a billion chance that I happen to be, you know, this victim, that I happen to be his choice. I, you know, I told one of my, my seventh grade English teacher on Thursday, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm being interviewed constant, a constant amount of times. I'm talking to police officers, I'm talking to attorneys, and it was such an emotionally filled moment where I had to, you know, tell this thing that I'd been holding in for like six months of my life. 
I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea that her stepfather, my ex-husband or husband at the time, had been sexually abusing her. As a mom, that um, I will carry that guilt for the rest of my life, that I, I brought a man into our lives that um, hurt my child. That I would have never thought she was being sexually abused. When I first met Madison, she had the attitude as, I'm over this, I don't care what happens, and I knew as a prosecutor that that wasn't accurate. While the case was going on, um, I, I did retire, but this was a special case. They were all special, but I particularly wanted to see this uh, case through. I knew that Amy was taking Madison to the Baton Rouge Children's Advocacy Center. I would be in touch with, with Gino, just making sure that uh, Madison and the family were, were doing okay. Madison, um, when you first came in, uh, the, the family, there was some of the dynamics of the family. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of anger. I tell her there's three ways you come out of sexual abuse. One, you can come up, become a perpetrator, just like the person who hurt you. Second way I say is uh, we, you can become a victim. The third way, and that's what I wanted Madison to see, is a hero. Uh, they, they want to protect children because of something that horrific happened to them. So I have a little sister who is, she's six years old now, and, and if I hadn't said anything, by the time she was 12, the exact same thing would have happened to her. In a way, it was me saying this stopped him from doing that and stopped him from doing it for different people. Uh, the DA actually was concerned that uh, whether she could testify or not. And as I watched her grow and empower herself, she wanted to testify. She not only wanted to testify, she wanted to make a statement at that trial. And she did. I was emotionally drained, I was wrecked, my mom was the exact same way. And um, I get here and it's kind of like, I was normalized. It was something they deal with every day, something that they had experience with, and I could get help. And it was, it was a little, you know, overwhelming at first, but eventually it became somewhat of a safe place where I could talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. The Baton Rouge Children's Advocacy Center has provided me a vehicle to get Madison help, but to also meet other parents and to know that it's not my fault and that uh, other, other good mothers and fathers miss signs too. I look at her now and, and how that light is back and she's got the spark again and she's, she's creative and she's brilliant and, and she's putting herself out there and so truly it took the work of, of her counselors, of Gino, of the Baton Rouge Children's Advocacy Center to bring my baby back. People who come to work at the CAC are not here because they want to make money. They're here because they really want to serve children who are the most vulnerable in our city. This CAC is needed, it's significant, it's beneficial. Most of the work goes un unseen, unheard of, until you come to the court, until you see that child, you see that victim, you see that family, and you give them their life back, you give them some hope. And that's really what the goal is, is to try to minimize revictimization and have these people that have been abused um, become survivors. When you have a wound on your arm, and you're walking around and it's throbbing all the time and you're not doing nothing but putting a Band-Aid on it, you're gonna have that pain for the rest of your life. But here, if we're gonna put the medication, we're gonna stitch it up, we're gonna do whatever you need to do to heal that wound. And I want the kids to see, do not let the first 25 years of your life ruin the next 50. This can absolutely ruin you. It can absolutely destroy your life. But the thing is whether or not you're gonna let it destroy your life. And this gives you the ability to take your life by like the reins and like put it back the way you want it to go. It, it's phenomenal here. They do great work. Everybody's dancing in the band's top volume. Grind to the rhythm as we whine and dine. Grab a sister and whisper, you're this one, this is mine.